So we're here at Lishon. See what happens when you have friends. Things get a lot better. Look at this place. Check out that view. Isn't that just epic? Look at that. You can get a little bird circling out in front of us down there. Wow, that's what I came here for. Enough of that fly nonsense. We're doing Lushan today. The Titan and pilots have just flown off down there. Um, it's light, it's sunny, it's beautiful, it's fun. Wait for a puff, make it easier. We're in no hurry. <laughs> That's what I've come here for. Ah, feels so much better. Proper scenic flying. Yeah, that's the way to end the year off. Getting my little recharge of beauty. Oh, those peaks in the background are just something else. Looking good, Mr. Brown. So small little thermals, because the sun's at my back, these thermals are gonna be weak. And the most obvious place to go is sitting over there in the sun. Yeah, cool, man. Right, let's take a look at what's going on here. You've got a main valley. That's the exit there leading out to the plains that uh, lead to Toulouse. So those are the French flatlands there. And that's the only entrance coming in here. That's the only entrance into this valley and it runs up it keeps going this direction and it leads up to the high peaks, the Pyrenees, that way. So you can expect that the mountains behind me are going to be warming up during the day, creating lift and thermals and that movement of air is going to draw air up the valley and that'll happen anywhere you have this sort of a valley system where you've got one valley pulling leading up towards that heat pump behind you adding to this effect you've got this whole built up area this town area all of this is going to be warming up in the sun from early on in the day because it has faces that face south on each building and those are going to warm up so there's a lot of fins here it's like a radiator it's picking up a lot of heat so this town I expect is going to be a couple of degrees warmer than the surrounding area and that's going to create some lift and it's going to tend to track up the valley and up the hills and it's going to add to that valley breeze effect. So I can expect there's going to be some kind of valley breeze setting up through the day that would peak at around 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock, as this wind strengthens and the wind pulls up towards the mountains. So that's the basic flow that's going to happen in the afternoon. I'm coming in here 
if you look at the shadows down at the bottom of the picture you can see the shadows of the trees are pretty close to the trees and they're on the far side so you can see from that that the sun is behind me and it's shining down on these trees and casting a shadow slightly that that side so you can kind of guess from that that north is somewhere over there and south is somewhere behind me so this whole slope here is a beautiful pyramid shape facing south so that is my slope that's going to be heating up the most particularly this piece up here that's really really going to be heating up and wanting to generate thermals or wanting to guide the thermals up its warm faces as the warm air rises and you've got quite a good feed from this town area down here which is probably going to start running up the slope like that and it's got a beautiful heat pump there leading up the slope so everything that I'm seeing on this slope especially this area is looking pretty juicy for making thermals and I'd expect in midsummer that this is going to be quite a powerful thermal area there's another one over here which looks quite good but it's slightly weaker because at the base of it you've got a forest so that isn't going to be generating lift it's going to be sucking the sunlight in to warm up the trees and to create photosynthesis so all of this area is a pretty poor thermal source until very late in the day when it might start releasing some of its gathered heat so that again suggests with this town here as a as a heat source this slope here is going to have the most powerful thermals in this picture we are coming in here in the morning um, or sort of midday and it's in September late September so this is late in the year and everything's very calm so we're really looking for the most powerful source that we can possibly find. If you were here in the middle of June, I would suggest that from about midday on, you're going to be very careful of the power of this um, valley wind that's going to come in because it's going to start drawing in so strongly that it might start spilling over onto this slope from the other side and it would certainly want to come and wrap around this corner and you might find that you get all of this lift that you expect is actually really heavy sink mixed with little sheltered almost dust devils coming up the back of the slope and this area would be a real scary place to be if you're coming in low in summer and the winds the valley winds on um, because if you look at the base of this picture if you're there and you run into turbulence you've got very limited landing options you're trying to glide you've maybe got a little patch uh, on the grass here and that's about it you've got a long glide to push around over a very built up area to get to your safe landing zone which is out near this arrow that's your landing field and you know across the river for emergency safety you want to get across that line because this is totally built up here it really isn't nice for landing so this sort of a slope could be a bit of a trap in summer you don't want to glide in here low and then find it's not working so I would only come in if I'm pretty confident that I can come in on this top section where I'm sure that there's going to be some lift and if I hit some problem there I've got enough height to still flick back to this side of the valley and use this ridge 
to escape. But definitely you don't want to be stuck in this lee side area when that valley breeze comes through. Looking around the valley, you've got a nice um, spine running along on the other side there. But these slopes, if you imagine this is north up here, this direction, these slopes here are all west facing. So the sun in the morning is shining from this side. It hasn't been on these slopes for more than an hour by this time in midday. And the angle of the sun is very, very shallow. So this is going to be cold over here. There's going to be no lift on these slopes. And any kind of breeze that runs along is going to tend to want to just follow the valley and not go up. So I wouldn't go across onto these slopes until slightly later in the day when if you've got the sun shining from this direction in the afternoon then this starts heating up and then you'd expect the thermals to be running up these little spines as the valley breeze pushes in and you can start working these upper slopes. So I'd transition to that later in the day and these slopes on this side would start working. But in the morning and up to the middle of the day my target is going to be this slope if the wind is very light and I'm pretty confident that I can ride that. And then I would try and work along the top of the spine. Um, another other area I might go and investigate once I got high would be looking at this and this slope. But bear in mind that the feeders are pretty weak. There's not a very good reservoir of heat to feed up onto those thermals. But the fact that there's a really nice high ridge line protecting that valley means that this valley breeze effect that's going to come up here isn't going to affect this valley. This valley is gently rising up here. The river's leading uphill. So your thermals going up along here gives you a good play area without significant valley winds to come and mess it up. So you can use that, that sort of um, blocker ridge in the distance to create a route to get you through and maybe you want to fly in that direction with your cross country route. Otherwise my main plan would be to follow this ridge to get higher here maybe somewhere. Um, hopefully get, get a climb up there and then try and go on a transition across to get up onto these slopes sort of midday um, and then I can go off and explore that way and maybe come back along those ridges with this lovely warming happening from the westerly sun before coming back to land. Right let's carry on. The ground speed's 37 which means there's absolutely no wind drift at all. I can see down in the valley, the wind is coming very lightly up the valley, which would make this slope very, very slightly in the lee. Kind of an ideal combination with the sun shining on it and the slight low pressure created by the lee should give me some thermals to work. <laughs> Look at the difference here, I'm on glide. And Kerry's using a bit of bar and his glide just stays flat. He just comes past me. Twenty-nine means to optimize I should be on a little bit of bar. You want to try and keep your um, ground speed close to 30. 
So Kerry's got a bit more glide. You can see that separation happening now between an ENC and a high comp glider. It means he'll come in just a bit above me on that slope. So I'm looking at the trees now. I'm trying to identify if I can see any wind blowing up the slope. can't see much movement. Ah, oh, there's something coming up there. I can see something pulling up the gully. Gives me the confidence to carry on and ignore the spillover that might be happening. Kerry's flown into something now. I'm getting myself ready for a thermal. I can see a bird climbing ahead of me. So I'm coming off the bar a little bit, getting ready for the thermal engagement. There it is. Three, two, one. Good enough. Felt like I was right on the edge there. Come back a little bit. There. And I can hold on to that piece. Now I could shift my circle further forward. While I've got something, I'm going to hold on to it. Every little bit of height I can get here. 0.2, not as good as I'd want. So now I'm going to push more into that core. That's good. If I can just come around on that. No lift there. So I want to tighten my next turn up. Three, two, one. I'm weight shifting before the Vario started singing. Still lost it again. Kerry's climbing faster than me now. So I think I need to shift across a bit more. That's good. Still hard to turn on the transition right at the edge of the thermal there. So it's like I need to anticipate it. Three, two, one. Roll weight shift. That was a better one. Still good lift there, and I feel better centered now. I'm not getting so much of that transition change. That's good there. Oh, I'm right on the edge. I can feel I'm right on the edge there. I need to move my circle further this way. And I'm doing that by just tightening up there. It's, that was just a little tweak of my right hand, that's all I needed. you enjoyed this short tutorial on flying in the mountains remember to keep yourself safe by keeping a lookout for approaching wind and think carefully about where the heat's going to be generated and where the winds are going to pull um, bear in mind that I'm comfortable in these mountains because I'm confident of slope landing on any of these slopes below here don't put yourself in one of these deep valleys without any landing options if you don't have developed landing skills. As always, thanks again to our patrons. You guys rock. You keep the channel humming and give me a lot of motivation to keep uh, going into the studio and editing these things. So thanks, guys. I noticed quite a change in his altitude there just on that one turn. So I know he's flown into lift. Take the forward line here. He's going further back, but uh, somewhere over here is a nice big rock face. And I don't want to be 
at the back of it, you know, too far back and I might miss the thermal. I think the thermal's over here somewhere. Kerry sinking. Helps me make my decision to just turn in this. Okay, I gotta be careful because I'm doing 360s low here. If I feel any squirrely feeling in the air, I'm gonna abandon my turn on this way around. And do a figure of eight. That's okay, I've still got reasonable contact with the inside wing. see what Kerry's gone for. It's tempting. Well, I'm going to glide across and I'm a bit lower than he went through. So I'm going to hope that I just make it up on the average through this pole and get to that nice climb out front. Okay, now this is the position where you've got to be careful. This is the lee, the wind coming through, and this is that area that would create turbulence and thermals. South facing, so this is where the heating is happening. But I'm flying on red alert when I come through here. I'm very close to the ground and I'm in a potential turbulent area. All right, so let's get some lift. Now to be expecting a bit of turbulence on this corner just where the wind has a chance to come around this lip. Guys, these movies are all funded by Flybubble. So you can help us by getting your gear from Flybubble. We'll promise you excellent service. Try the email address if you're outside the EU and you might be pleasantly surprised.